Welcome. Welcome, everyone, to the Gut Pharmacist podcast. We have two special guests today, the co-founders of this incredible type of testing, which we'll, which we'll get really in-depth today. So we have Aaron and Josh. Thank you so much, guys, for being on today. Thanks yeah, we're stoked us. to be here. We're excited to oh, talk cool. all things bioenergetics. Yes, I can't wait. I think a lot of people need to know more about this. So Erin, I know you're a nurse. Are you currently still a nurse or have you kind of moved on to something else? Yeah, I work very part-time still in a clinic setting. I've always been in pediatrics. So now I work outpatient um, in a hematology oncology clinic, um, mostly just to keep my license active and to, you know, uh, just stay up with the times in that world. But uh from Josh's experience and our experience together navigating his chronic health stuff, I really have just, I don't know, dove into holistic wellness and holistic health. And we'll we'll talk through his story a little bit, but that definitely has changed my trajectory as far as my nursing career goes. Yeah, um, yeah I, I bet. Back, mm-hmm, I got my certification to be an integrative health practitioner. And so that's mostly what I do now. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, good to know. And then Josh, I know you kind of had a health journey, which brought you into this type of testing. So tell us about that, that journey. Yeah, it, it started, I don't know, six or seven years ago, where just random symptoms started to come up. I was a adrenaline junkie, high on life, maximum optimistic. And then I just tanked. And uh, uh, from every type of symptom you can think of from anxiety, depression, insomnia, nerve pain. I started to get atrophy on the right side of my body. Fatigue was put me essentially bedridden the last, I don't know, eight months of my journey prior to finding bioenergetics. But yeah, I would go in and out for six months out of the year. I'd feel pretty good. And then for six months, I'd feel really bad. And we had tried just about everything from Western eyes to functional medicine. We were just searching, um, kind of like the, that pitch of, I was spending 30 to 50 grand a year, just trying to find any type of answers. And some would feel like we were getting somewhere and then I would tank again and be frustrated and lose hope. And yeah, then we found bioenergetics and it very literally saved my life. It came in at my rock bottom of life and it got really dark there for a while. And I definitely didn't put any hope in the idea of bioenergetic testing and kind of poo-pooed it for a long time, but I didn't really have anything else to lose at that point and started doing it. And here I am. Wow. Awesome. It's kind of, I'm kind of in the same boat. I've been on a journey myself, especially neurological, which I'm still kind of Mm -hmm. recovering from, but healed my gut, thyroid, lots of different things, but the brain, that's a whole other story (laughs) that takes a long (sighs) time. So thank you for sharing that. Just being able to understand your healing journey helps us kind of relate with the audience a little bit. So yeah. bioenergetic seems like it really helped you guys. So that's the topic <laughs> today. So what is bioenergetic or bioresonance testing? Give us a good intro on that. You want me to go first? I'll let Josh give you the ele- <laughs> elevator pitch and then I'll take okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'll do it in layman's terms because that's who I am. Um, and then <laughs> let the smart ones talk. <laughs> Um, so bioenergetics is taking samples of hair and saliva in our case with Rudy and, um, measuring it on a level of Hertz. And so kind of how I describe that Hertz has been around for a really long time and we're able to identify what things are in a level of Hertz from, you can go on Spotify playlists and listen to music in level of Hertz to getting a device and, you know, the chair that we're sitting on and see what level of parts it is. We're kind of doing the same technology with hair and saliva samples and introducing thousands of data points to see whether or not the level of Hertz skyrockets, plummets, or remains the same. And through a lot of science and about 30 years of the evolution of bioenergetics, we've been able to determine we, not we, as in Rudy, (laughs) science has been able to determine that a balanced body in most cases sits between 49 and 59 Hertz. And so we're introducing things like toxins or nutritional supp- like foods or environmentals or hormones and things like that. We can see whether or not the level of Hertz is skyrocketing, plummeting, or remain the same. So 
if it sits in between that 49 and 59 Hertz, we know that your body is in balance with what's been introduced and you're good to go. But if it doesn't, and you're skyrocketing from 60 to hundred or 48 to zero, we know that your body is struggling in some way, whether it be inflammation or complete stress, which is beyond the point of inflammation and really turns into that weakness. And for a lot of people that we work with in the chronic illness community, usually your toxic bucket is pretty overflowing mm -hmm. yes. and it's really difficult to identify specific root causes of why that is happening. And so with the idea of Hertz and introducing things to your samples, we're able to identify in a bio-individual sequence, how your body wants to heal and get to the root causes of things. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Well, yeah. let's hear the super fancy go, <laughs> breakdown. <laughs> Great. No, I love it. I think, um, for people like, I mean, honestly, we were skeptics, uh, at the beginning, I think when we hear words like frequency or resonate or energy in relation to health or biology, um, it just starts to feel a little wishy-washy or hippy dippy, but I always like to kind of first just bring it back to like middle school science. <laughs> um, and you know, Einstein, I think was the one that said like considering, uh, when we're thinking about matter, we've had it all wrong. Like it's really all energy. Uh, and we're all made up of these subatomic particles, right? These protons, neutrons, and electrons, and they're, they're buzzing, they're vibrating. And we know that anything with a vibration, um, has a frequency it emits a frequency like that's what vibration is and so that's a measurable thing and that's really what we're using in this testing with this technology we're we're measuring hertz in a in a unit of hertz and um so that's kind of like the the breakdown of it but i think again in relation to energy and health really at the end of the day like we are energetic beings we are energy beings it's not it's not a you know a hippy dippy thing to say it's it's true and and we have other modalities even in conventional medicine um, that taps into this with like EKGs we're measuring electrical impulses in the heart and EEGs we're measuring the brain waves electrical activity within the brain um, and even MRIs that's a it, the R stands for resonant so it's it, Right. We are using these things in other um, kind of conventional allopathic medicine, um, but we are really interested at Rudy in helping people to uncover the root cause of, of things. I think through Josh's journey, and I'm sure you would resonate with this as well, but it, a lot of people are working within this framework of symptom management. Like that's kind of what our healthcare system is. It's this very siloed symptom management. Uh, and we just weren't satisfied with that. <laughs> um, right. Me neither. Felt, <laughs> yeah. It felt very apparent to me when he almost overnight developed this crippling, uh, like panic anxiety and along with a slew of other symptoms, night sweats, shortness of breath, um, pain, and you know, all these other things, a person who never, experienced issues with his mental health for me it felt so apparent that there was a physiological component to this um, but of course we'd go to doctors and it was all chalked up to you know whether or not they said it's in your head or not or just here's some you know ssri or or something to treat that symptom i'm like well yeah but what's causing that like i want to get to the root of it so that's right. where the name rudy comes from really we're, we're trying to get to the root uh, and helping oh, people okay. to find good to know yeah. i didn't know that i love it yeah. okay just a fun play on words yeah, yeah i love that because bioenergetics was so foundational for us to get there um uh, that's just really been the tool that we focused on but we know there's other ways of healing too um we just get really excited about this one <laughs> yeah and i do too i use it all the time i love yeah. this test if anyone's yeah. listening it's a good one um but you guys both mentioned the science and we know yeah. that this type of testing specifically isn't really used in allopathic yet but there is research on it right i mean people are always skeptical but there is science on it yeah do you want to take sure take I'll, it away yeah there there is but it's limited um and kind of like all medicine it's slightly archaic and that's kind of one of the main pieces that resonated with me when i was going through this is I'm a very analytical person. I appreciate data, um, but also I really enjoy health and science. 
And there was a way to kind of marry that. And so that's what we began to focus on. There is science and research behind this, like Harold Burr and who founded this, Aaron can talk a little bit about him. He's now our idol. Um, <laughs> yeah. But where I started to see limitations inside of the evolution of bioenergetics was that there wasn't enough analytical findings to start to represent the true magic behind this. And so at Rudy, we decided to make that part of our foundation of the company and start to build a backend app that curates all of this information to start to build a corrugated force of analytics to start integrating into studies at universities and hospitals and even practitioners and start to identify root causes of huge things like ADHD or even just viruses or long COVID we're working really hard with right now. And all of that data has meaning and not many were aggregating it. Um, so with the app that we're building, it will be fully backend in Rudy. So users won't necessarily know that it's an app, but we'll be aggregating all of that information to start to hopefully make huge waves and impacts uh, impacts on the masses and start to kind of get the word out of bioenergetics a lot more. When we talk to people in science or universities or even hospitals, they're uh, very uh, approachable. They receive the information really well. And part of the reason that they receive it well is because we can talk analytically behind our findings um, and that it's not just woo-woo, even though energy right. can sound so much like woo-woo, it is very much science. Um, and when we can get to the foundation of Hertz and then the numbers that exist alongside of that and how we're able to show what resonates and what doesn't, uh, yeah, we're hoping to make a really big impact, uh, not just on like the functional medicine community, but the health community as a whole. Yeah, and it feels it feels like human consciousness is kind of shifting in a lot of ways, especially in the health space. Um, so people are more open, I think, now more than ever, especially I just think a lot of people are getting fed up with the answers that we've been given by this framework that a lot of us um, were kind of steeped in. So I, I do think that's going to be helpful, but having the data and the numbers is so, so huge because we, I mean, I, no doubt, I believe like things like acupuncture and all these other sort of energy modalities are, of course, I mean, they've been used for thousands of years. Of course, they're doing something and there are absolutely studies that show that. Um, but the thing that's unique about bioenergetics is that we are literally measuring and marking with a number. A level of hertz and so those are things that we can track and we can find correlations and we can um you know patterns and things within you know big especially the more data that we're able to collect the more we're going to understand about all of this stuff so we get really excited about that side of things um but honestly like even if we were only to help like one person like it that enough <laughs> it makes right. it worth our time but um yeah I, I think we're excited about the future we feel like this is really like the future of medicine in so many ways and, yeah I'm and one with piece you on that and one piece uh, about the data too that has helped so much just even in my journey is correlating my chronological order of healing which uh riley like you and i may have the exact same symptoms and be diagnosed with the exact same thing but our sequence of healing most likely is going to look very different because right. of our bio individuality yeah. and so with the data it's not just correlating the masses to find root causes that may be contributing to something as an example like adhd it's also really going to help people heal on their own individual journey for us to be able to correlate saying like hey, this toxin popped up. We see X percent of people struggle with these types of symptoms. This may not resonate for you, but there's modalities that may help regulate your nervous system during this time or focus on this type of healing while you're taking remedies. That was something that didn't exist for me as I was healing. I kind of was just in like a crapshoot and my healing journey ended up being really, really intense. Mm -hmm. And I am now under the belief that healing doesn't necessarily have to be as intense as what I experienced. And with the data that we have now, we can kind of aid in it being a little bit gentler and be something that doesn't wipe you out for a year like it did me. And right. you can still go on with life and start to recognize 
improvements in your health as you go, which I think is going to be a really, really important piece to how people heal. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm finding in general that healing doesn't have to be complicated or intense or uncomfortable. It can just be simple getting back to those basic foundations and Rudy is very foundational. So that's also great Mm -hmm. to mention, but we know there's a bright future in this type of testing, but what is it looking like right now? So currently what types of practitioners are using this type of testing? That's a great question. So we do, uh, because it was important for us to keep this accessible to people, We, you can be anyone and purchase a Rudy scan on our site. Um, and it always comes with a free consult with one of our practitioners. Again, making sure that people feel supported and guided throughout their healing journey is really important to us. So that's why the free consult is included there. Um, but if you're a practitioner listening, or if you work with clients, even if you're not a practitioner, say you're I don't know, a a mindfulness coach or something, Um, you can absolutely uh, work with us. Should I say, is it hey at Mm rudy.life? And we have both practitioner programs and um, affiliate programs. So if you don't qualify for the practitioner program, which right now we're kind of just working on like a... um, I don't know, a one-on-one basis, just because this is kind of like the wild west right now. <laughs> like All right. Uh, anyone can hold a certification. Like it, I really need to like look into what the background of that practitioner is. If you have, the main thing is we want to make sure you have a really, you know, well-rounded understanding of root cause work um, because the results are fairly robust. Like it's a lot of information and especially the toxin section and things like that. We don't want to just be handing this out and then, you know, causing people to have fear or just feel confused. So, uh, you know, we, we kind of take that on, on a one-on-one basis, but, um, as far as like the general public goes, you can just go um, purchase a scan all by yourself. You don't need anybody and we'll, we'll help you. But we love working with practitioners too. I think it's a really useful tool for a lot of people. Um, and it, and honestly, I love when people use it in conjunction with functional testing too, uh, for a lot of reasons, but one, it's just like confirming that, that inner skeptic in me, that's always going to be like, you know, how does this stuff work? <laughs> and then I'm, and then I'm able to see it, you know, up next to an HTMA or other functional lab work. And I'm like, well, shoot, it's all correlating. Like it's making sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Specifically for practitioners too, education really matters in this space. And we want to make sure that any heal people working in the healing space feel really confident yeah. in the data that they're essentially presenting to all of their clients. So it is something that's really important to us as we continue to build out the Rudy platform, specifically with the data and the apps that we're building out an educational platform for the practitioners that are a part of Rudy to start to help them understand more fully all the testing that we are doing. And then also to help aggregate information for all of their clients, because what we're seeing right now in the data is that seasonality affects things, location affects things. Mm-hmm. Um, Lots diff- of environmental allergy points happening right time. now. <laughs> yeah, but a yeah. Lot, so true. A lot of that allows a little bit of predictability from looking at data from the past. And if you have a set of clients that you can look at as a whole, all of their data, a lot of times you can build out programs, uh, not necessarily as umbrella protocols because That doesn't work with bioindividuality, but you can start to build awareness around certain things based on the aggregate data that the practitioners hold inside of all of their client base. So that's coming soon and hopefully positively impacts most practitioners and builds out a little bit more education to build more conversation around the topics. Yeah, good to know. And I do, just like Aaron said, I do feel like it correlates with other lab markers, which is amazing. I still occasionally doubt this type of testing, just like Aaron. I'm with you. And yeah. It, yeah. it matches Forever every skeptic. time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. It's pretty crazy. I'm always I mean, skeptical. Same. I think that's why we continue to just like dive into data because yeah. we're like, no way. And I'm like walking proof that I this know. works. And, and Honestly, we're seeing hundreds of people now go through Rudy and go live their lives in a healthy way after being bedridden for years. Yep. Um, but yeah, having some concrete information and correlation is going to be gigantuous in this space to build uh, kind of like that community that's on the front runner of this medicine. Um, so yeah, that's our goal is to continue to prove that and support it with other 
lab work mm -hmm. or HTMAs and or that's, things like that. That's not to say that bioenergetic testing and our specific scan is some silver bullet. Like I think as humans, we're always going to be looking for that silver bullet and that's not how healing works. Like it's just, it's just not. So, but I do think the beauty of bioenergetics is that we are working with your body, not, not just your body, like your bio field, right? Like your energy field. And that is including all your environment. That's including the things that you're taking in, you're eating, your emotions, like all of these things are unique to you. And I think that's why it is such a successful tool is because it's taking your individuality from all those aspects into consideration. And we're almost like asking the body with every test, we're kind of asking the body a question like, A, what is priority? Like which toxin, which you know, new nutrients, things like that, that are out of balance, which ones are most important right now? What's kind of low hanging fruit that we can really address and help bring the body back into balance. Um, and then number two, like, what are you most ready to clear? Um, because some of these toxins, like Riley, I'm sure you're familiar with this concept, but some of these toxins get deep, like they are buried so deep, yeah. whether they're burrowed into tissues or, you know, lodged within our nervous system, like some of these things are hard to clear. Uh, and so we're kind of asking the body each time with each subsequent scan, like, okay, what are we ready to clear now? Uh, and we're going to work on that. Um, and so I think that's why it's part of the reason why it's so successful. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like it just helps me put the pieces together and figure out things that I've suspected for a long time. And it's just a great mm -hmm. way to wrap everything together and find the bigger picture. So I yeah. really love that test. And kind of like Aaron mentioned, those toxins can get deep. So let's talk about Lyme and Lyme co-infections, because those are common contributors to chronic illness. Mm -hmm. But testing is highly flawed. And the yeah. way these things work is they can hide from the body from testing. So let's talk about that. How is this testing really great for Lyme and co-infections? Yes, I love talking about this. So because we found through bioenergetics, and I should clarify, bioenergetic testing is not a diagnostic tool. So we are never using this information to diagnose a person with Lyme or anything. Um, it is picking up imbalances within the body. Uh, and so and part of that is toxins. And so within the toxin section, what we're doing there is we are looking for the energetic code or signature of those toxins within the samples. Uh, we know that each, like we talked about the vibrating subatomic particles, everything has a unique frequency, energetic code signature, a thing that we are able to pick up energetically. And so that is what we're looking for in the toxin section. Um, and that's how we found for Josh that he had Lyme or Borrelia. He resonated with Borrelia and Every, Every co infection. I think maybe he was missing one oh, or two. Lucky you. I know. Yeah. Super uh, fortunate. So that's why he was so sick. But of course, I mean, how we had tested him twice for with the conventional. Uh, it's a two step test generally. It's the ELISA, where it's a kind of the screening test. And that I think I've read recently is a 50% like false negative right. at this point. So yep. specifically for only a few strands of. Yep. Borrelia. So right. that doesn't take into account all the other strands that exist. Yeah. And so it's super faulty. And then, so if you get a negative on that one, which 50% chance it could be wrong, then you don't even get the second step of that test, which is the Western blot. Um, so for Josh, I mean, we weren't even thinking Lyme because we were told he was negative, right? Uh, right. <laughs> but I didn't have a rash, no bullseye. Which I, now we know is only 25% of people in the Go rush. figure. <laughs> I know, right? And I can't remember a time in my life that I've actually been bitten by a tick. Right. So uh, never pulled one off of me. The other interesting piece in my experience with all of that is while my tests came back negative twice, what was said to me is even if you got tested and it became, and it was positive, there's nothing really we can do because it's not inside the week of you getting bit yeah the two-week window or whatever ah, so, so it's a very poorly understood diagnosis i think by most conventional i mean even lyme literate doctors i just i hear stories left and right from clients it's it's a crapshoot it really is and so for us we once we found this out and figured this out via bioenergetic and so many things started making sense like the the neuropathies and the like muscle weakness and just so many things that we had no answers for just started making so much sense in the brain fog and all of this 
um, we were less concerned with getting a diagnosis and more concerned with getting well, right? <laughs> so, right. Um, so yeah, we uh, used bioenergetics, which then kind of matched him up with certain herbal remedies, homeopathic remedies, and nutritional supp- supplements to really help help the body find balance again. And uh, you know, if somebody is listening who has a Lyme diagnosis, I would just encourage you. Um, Lyme is a huge or Borrelia is a huge toxin and it's often a heavy hitter, Lyme and co-infections. And it's not necessarily the problem. Like it's an immune system problem. It's an imbalance within the body that's allowing these toxins to replicate and, and, you know, get sneaky and hide places and things like that. So once your body's in balance, like those microbes are going to not be an issue. Um, It's something we're seeing actually more often now it's opportunistic uh lime and all co-infections and Mm -hmm. other viruses and toxins that exist but when the immune system has to go to tend to something else whether it be just massive loads of stress or an Mm -hmm. event or covid or anything like that those opportunistic toxins are going to take advantage of your immune system being preoccupied with something else and when that happens you may have had lime since you were a baby and just lived a life totally fine because your immune system was attending to it appropriately. But once it takes advantage, it wreaks havoc really fast. And that snowball effect happens quicker than I thought could even remotely happen. Um, And then once that happens, it's, it could be a long road of not getting answers. And so by identifying whatever toxin it is, Lyme and co-infections seem to be the most in, most prevalent ones that we see. I think probably just because that's where a lot of our connections were, you know, like Josh has been a part of Lyme communities and things like that, but we do see a lot of mold illness. Uh, I mean, just lots of things. We're seeing lots of post, you know, COVID long haulers, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, right. But yeah, again, not diagnostic, but that doesn't mean it's not helpful. <laughs> Here <laughs> I, I am. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So this is energetic testing, as we know. And for example, you guys have a section on hormones, but this Mm -hmm. is going to be completely different than the chemical testing, like blood testing. So explain the difference between chemical and energetic testing. Yeah, this is, I love this topic so much. So, and it's, again, I feel like humanity and consciousness is kind of talking about this a lot more. Um, But this concept of quantum biology or uh I don't know it's it's just a completely different framework so sometimes it's hard for people to really understand um but where a traditional like a hormone test or other lab work that you're drawing blood and sending in we're looking from a chemical perspective or we're 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 looking for particular um you know whether it's a a chemical or other things within the substance. Um, whereas with bioenergetics, we are looking, uh, we're measuring things in a unit of Hertz, like we've talked about. Uh, but we're also, we're also, um, I'm trying to, <laughs> sorry, I'm stuttering over my words. No, uh, that's okay. First, first, let me explain this concept. So <laughs> from a quantum biology perspective, uh, I think we've been applying what's, what's called Newtonian kind of principles to biology for the last couple hundred years. Um, and that meaning like, okay, we know that a, a certain enzyme is, is floating around. It's going to kind of unlock this key to this next chemical reaction and so on and so forth. And that's kind of how we've explained everything within the human body uh, to some degree. But now we know that there are, first of all, we have trillions of cells and every single one is completing like hundreds of thousands of tasks every second. (laughs) So there's Mm -hmm. so much happening within the body. There's no way that we can explain that through kind of this Newtonian framework that we've been working with from biology. So what we're understanding more and more now, and actually just in last year, there was a Nobel Peace Prize um, in this field of quantum entanglement. And it's like, we know that all these particles are communicating somehow from far apart. A lot of that is electrical in nature and and things like that. So that's where this energy or electricity comes into play. And that's really what we're working with. So it's a completely different framework than than what we're used to, the chemical, you know, uh, or Newtonian biology stuff that we've been working with the last couple hundred years. 
Uh, but it's, I mean, it's just so informative and it gives us so much information. And actually Harold uh, Burr, the guy that kind of founded bioenergetics back in the 30s, um, he was a professor at Yale, um, but he was the first one to kind of document this biofield that living organisms have. And he actually found that a change in the electric field of an organism actually preceded the physical or biochemical changes in a lot of cases. And so that is just incredible to me because what that says is that we're able to pick up energetically on imbalances, things that if left unattended, if left unattended or, or not fixed, not brought within balance, will then lead to a biochemical change in the form of like visible disease or illness or things that we would then pick up on our traditional testing, like what we do in conventional medicine. So it, in my opinion, it's, it's like the epitome of preventative medicine because we're actually seeing things before it manifests in physical form, which is mind blowing. Wow. Okay. That's <laughs> incredible. <laughs> that was a mouthful, but that's great information. It was. To know. Sorry, that's, I had, I had no. to stumble over it first, but then we got there. <laughs> No, that's okay. I love the reality of this. So kind of wrapping things up, are there any last thoughts, any projects or announcements that you want to get more in depth with? And then how can people order the tests and work with you guys? Do you want to take it? I just talked a lot. Yes, well, you sure, <laughs> sure. The biggest thing right now, Rudy, that we're working on is building out the app to really corrugate all of this data that we're gathering to essentially prove validity and get into studies in universities and start to bring bioenergetics to the forefront of people's minds when they think about healing. Um, that experience for the user is going to be really incredible because we're with that data now, we're able to break it down even further to see where things are in parasymp parasympathetic versus sympathetic to even just different types of modalities that may work based on the data that we're receiving from the samples. So as an example, a cold plunge may not be a route of healing your nervous system if something comes back saying you're in X versus maybe a detoxific detoxification pathway, maybe something better to focus on. We're gonna be able to curate all of that quickly with how we're building the app to siphon through all of this data. Um, it's definitely what we're most excited about and definitely the most resources that we're putting behind because we truly believe that healing is possible and we want to integrate hope into that as much as possible. Um, so yeah, that's probably what we're working on the most right now. We're hoping to get into a few studies. We are talking with um, potentially a few people that to help prove certain toxins are causing certain uh, different types of symptoms and things like that. Again, it's tricky because it's not diagnostic, but it's all about correlations and patterns. Mm -hmm. Like that's really what right. we're interested in. Um, and in a lot of studies, that's what primarily they're focused on. So right, it's exactly. really helpful. Uh, people are resonating in studies really well with this because they're not necessarily looking for direct diagnostics inside of this. They're looking for the correlation. And if we can prove that large percentages are suffering with X, and we see them having this type of toxin or this imbalance, it's going to be really, really impactful inside of these studies. Um, and so our goal in all of this is to eventually help eliminate some of this on the forefront instead of having to help people heal on the back end. Um, so if we can build more awareness on that, I think we're going to be in a pretty big win. Can't wait. I can't wait to see this explode. And I'm happy to support you and be a part of the journey. You're the best. Oh, same to you guys. Thank you so much for all the information. So everyone I think needs this type of testing. So I will post <laughs> the link in the show notes and you can, you guys can order that whoever's listening. It's just such a helpful test. And it really helped me find a lot of things that I've suspected too, but thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Josh. This was yeah. a lot of amazing information. Yeah, awesome. thank you for having you rock, us. Riley. Oh, you guys are great. Well, I hope you take care and thanks for sharing this amazing testing with us. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much.